Hello there and welcome to part 6 of this tutorial series and what I would like to do in this video is cover some of the other methods that are part of this library that you can use to extract some financial or non-financial data um, and what I'm going to start with is maybe defining a separate function for the PE ratio because that is a question that I've received more than once. Um, the question was basically, should we use the data and calculate the P ratio ourselves by taking the, the net result of a company and dividing it with the number of outstanding shares? Or is there a faster way to do it? And I think it's, it makes a lot of sense to start with that. In fact, uh, I have highlighted here get quote table because that's where we can find that information. The way we're going to do it is, well, quite similar to what we've done so far in terms of the structure. So. First, we can define our PE ratio at the beginning as a zero. Um, then we're going to define a separate function, let's say PE, which would take a ticker. Um, for the functions that we've created before, we did not need to specify a ticker because we didn't really access any method. It was actually the data that we've already stored in the balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement as part of our get data. But in this case, since we're going to uh, extract additional data, we're going to use uh, the ticker here and we'll see how that works um, to get this quote table and then see what's all part of that. So the first thing that we're going to do is global PE ratio, just to make sure that we have that included. And now PE ratio uh, would be equal to Yahoo Finance, which is something that we've imported so far, dot get quote table for the ticker. So let's start with this and let's see what this get quote table provides us back. And then if we need to make some other adjustments. Now I'm not going to run it yet because we don't have this uh, function executed at the moment. Uh, instead what I'm going to do is, um, let's have here just for one ticker just to make sure that it works. And uh, let's have PE of the ticker. Although this PE would not be the PE ratio yet, but we're going to get there. So should it be, yeah, I think that should be fine, PE. So let's run this. And basically at the moment, everything's being stored in this PE ratio variable, which is not fully correct because that's not our PE ratio yet, but we need to see how to get there. So let's print what we, let's see what we have as part of the PE ratio. So as you can see, there are quite some information. There's a target estimate, there's a 52 week range, etc. But the one that we're looking for is the PE ratio. Now, where can we find that? Here it is. So this is indeed the, 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 um, the variable that we need to, the keywords that we need to use to make sure that we get the PE ratio. And basically what we would get back is the 26.58. So I'm going to copy this as it is. And what I'm going to do, and keep in mind here, there's a lot of other information that maybe you, you might need. Uh, maybe you need uh, the earnings date, uh, the ex-dividend date, forward dividend and yield, market cap. Maybe you would like to sort them based on market cap. This is where you can get the information. So if we access this PE ratio and then access the PE ratio trading 12 months, then we would get the number. And this is indeed what we need. So back to our script, what we're going to do is PE ratio would be get that quote table and then access the PE ratio for the last 12 months. And then of course, this would now be correct. Now there is one thing that we need to adjust for and that is uh, there are companies that do not have positive result. And in that case, you would get uh, from the Yahoo Finance website, not a number. And ideally you would not want to encounter that. So one way to solve it is um, we can have if PE ratio is not equal to PE ratio, which is one way to check if um, some variable contains not a number or not. Because if you have, if the PE ratio is 26 and it checks, uh, this would actually turn to false, right? Because it would be, is it not equal to itself? It's not, so it's kind of double negative, but if it's not a number, so maybe here we can add a comment that this is check if not a number. And if that is the case, then we would like to set the P ratio back to zero. And instead, uh, this is something that maybe later on we can work with. 
So at the moment, what we have is um, we have the function that, first of all, it takes this global variable that's outside of the function. It access Yahoo Finance to get this quote table for the ticker, and then it gets the PE ratio. And if this PE ratio is not a number, then we're going to set it back to zero. Otherwise, we might get into issues if you later on want to calculate different PE ratios and you have not a number. So for now, this is um, fine. So we can use this. And of course, here, if we have this PE ticker, that, that's P, um, the PE ratio of the ticker that's sufficient to get that and store it into our PE ratio uh, variable. Now, this is, I, I'm not going to cover all of them, but the, the best way um, to do it, in my opinion, and it's probably the easiest way is, um, let me comment this part out. So, comment it out. If you have, if you store it into a data, so your data would be equal to Yahoo Finance dot, and then the method name, so get balance sheet, get cash flow, whatever it is, provide a ticker, then take a look at the data, take a look at the structure. Uh, if it's a dictionary, just like we had in, in this example, specify the keyword and then you get the data. And of course, if you have it as a function, you can reuse it as many times for as many tickers as you want that are available, of course, on Yahoo Finance. So for example, um, let's say that we have this get stats. So what does that mean? Well, data equals to Yahoo Finance dot get stats for, let's say, Coca-Cola, I'm going to run it and let's see what our data is. Print data, and then you can see the structure. So you have the market cap, the EV or enterprise value, trailing P, forward P, etc. So this is also one way that you can take a look at. But if you take a look at, at the information that are available, there's um, the number of shares that are being short sold, the short ratio, then you have percentage of flow. There's a lot of information here. As you can see, there's, I think it was 60 rows, probably 60, yeah, counting from these two as well. So 60 rows of all kinds of information, quarterly revenue growth. So this is something that you can also take a look at uh, if you're interested in. Then maybe you would like to see, all right, I would like to take a look at um, get stats valuation. So what does that mean? Get stats valuation, take a look at the data. If, um, if there's some additional information that maybe you're missing, you can always um, take a look at search for get stats valuation. And that would bring you to, to the part of the, of the website where it provides you with an example of, okay, this is how you can um, use this method. So in our case, get stats valuation. If we print our data, then this is what we get. And as you can see, this is, I think to some extent was already included in to get stats, but probably this is only the part that's related to valuation. Um, so just if, if you're new to this, if you want to figure out how this works, just take a look at these methods, store them into a data, but make sure that it is a ticker that you need, because I assume that this get top crypto does not require a ticker, but there's one way to check get top crypto. And here it is. So all we need to provide, this is a bit strange. I don't think that this is how it should be, but let's take a look maybe. Hmm. I don't think there's, it makes any, any sense that provide a ticker. So let's, let's take a look into that. Get stats, uh, get top crypto. Let's try with not providing anything and see if that returns any data. So print data. Okay. So that. I guess makes sense. So ticker is not really mandatory. So I guess as part of the website, this is not fully correct. Sorry, this part. Uh, there are 10 columns. So let's take a look at the columns. We have the symbol, name, price, change, percentage, change, market cap, volume. So there is still quite some information, although this is not particularly related to the tutorial series that uh, is being covered mainly it's not fundamental analysis but there's uh, quite some information that you can get and yeah just work with it so what i think is good to do now is we do have quite a lot of information but we can't really use them because we don't have the data stored so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to select let's say 105 to 100 and 
15 so just 10 random tickers and I would like to store all these information that we had so far in a structured way and one way to do that is we can import pandas so let's do that import pandas as pd and we're going to create our own let's say summary so our summary would be equal to pd data frame and it would have the following columns it would have First, we would like to know the ticker of the company. Then we would like to know the PE ratio. Then maybe we can do the same order. So maybe profitability, leverage, and operating efficiency. So we have one, two, three, four, five columns. At the moment, that's what our data would look like. So we would have five uh, columns and for each uh, ticker we would have this information now what are the next steps that we can that we need to do is as part of our for loop what we can do is as part of our uh, try so what we are going to try is we're going to create a new row that would have all this information so um, what we've done so far is running all the functions so we have all the data at these, at this point we should have all the data so we're going to create a new row and that new row would be a dictionary and what are the information that we we are going to store is well we're going to store everything in order to full to to fill our data set for these columns so let's start with ticker what should our ticker store be well it should be the ticker that we iterate through I think it's quite self-explanatory now for the PE ratio, what is it that we would like to store? That is our PE ratio that we already have. And this would change accordingly based on the data that's scraped. So what we're doing is we're just creating a dictionary and we're assigning um, just information that we've already calculated. What we would like to store as profitability, well, that is the profitability score that we have. So let's take a look at that and store it here this side then we have the leverage so what is the number that we would like in that column that is the leverage score let's take a look at that store it and then finally we had our operating efficiency which is our operating efficiency we don't really need to print them anymore so I'm going to remove these uh, lines so I don't print anything actually, leverage score, profitability score. So we're going to remove those. And basically what we have, maybe I can just zoom in on this fully. We have a row that has five columns and these are the information on the right side, uh, what those rows, uh, what those columns and rows would contain. Now, what we need to do is we need to add this new row to our summary pandas that data frame that we've created. So summary, would be equal to summary to whatever we had already, if we had anything. And then you're going to append new row, ignore index would be equal to true. There we have it. So now what we would expect is once this runs, a new row will be created and it will be added to our summary. And maybe what's good to have is once this is done, we can print ticker plus added it just provides us with information that okay this ticker has been added and if that's not the case then we get this message that something went wrong and let's not run the, the stop crypto anymore but that should be fine so let's run it and let's see if we run into any error and this is of course a part that you need to just um, walk through it okay so we have something on line 13 oh here I need to close this so that makes sense and let's see so someone we're printing the ticker even so that's not really oh yeah of course it's part of our for loop still but we can see that it's it's being added and it, as you can see it doesn't take that much time to to do that let's oh, let's quickly remove that print part because we don't really need that so um let's take a look at our summary file now so how does that look like 
or our pandas data frame. And this is what we have. So we have a nice structured data frame that has a ticker and later on if you want you can uh, maybe connect it with a dictionary and have a company name instead of ticker. We have the PE ratio, we have profitability, leverage and operating efficiency and maybe what's also good to do is to calculate total score. I think that might be good so instead of having all this separately maybe it's good to have total score which would be equal to zero then we can add it here but an even better way would be once everything is completed so one once this for loop runs we can have summary total score just a completely new column that would be equal to summary uh, profitability plus summary leverage and we can use we need to use these of course because this is the the column name plus summary operating efficiency and i would like to just check to make sure that this works that i'm not saying something that's not correct uh, i'm going to run it just for less companies so let's do just like two or three tickers and now we should only get the information if it has been already added or not and let's take a look at the summary file so this makes sense now as you can see this the our first company has profitability of score of one leverage of one total of two this one is much stronger in terms of uh, strength of financial position um, the last part that I would like to cover is if you would like to uh, use this for all companies what you might encounter is uh, to get some issue because you've scraped too many websites too often from from uh, Yahoo Finance so what you might want to do is maybe import time and use as part of our for loop maybe here um, maybe afterwards it makes more sense just time dot sleep three seconds two seconds whatever it, it, it makes sense but if you want to scrape all 500 maybe you might run into an issue of that and this is maybe one way that you can easily solve it I'll, I'll leave it here for now um, and the last part maybe one more thing is good is if you want to out uh, to export this summary you can just have summary dot to CSV um, let's say summary.csv so that could be our and let me let me just run it for swan company so we don't have a lot of time that should run fine um should be on my other screen to get the file just to make sure that it works this is how our data set would look like i think this is sufficient for this uh series because basically if you understand this part you can kind of get all the all the information that you need from Yahoo Finance and make all kinds of calculations. So thank you for following and I'm not sure if I'm going to make another video in as part of this series unless there's something that you would like me to cover. Um, if not, probably a new one and I'll see you in that one as well.